What is up everyone? My name is Andre, also known as at the troll truck on Instagram. Uh, first off, I want to start this video by saying Happy New Year. I wish you guys nothing but the best, even given the circumstances that we're in. That being said, today is the beginning of a new series called Build Bio. So in Build Bio, I'm going to go over almost all the, the intricate pieces of the build. So today, as you guys can see, is uh, tires. You know, what size tire can you fit as well as wheels? What type of wheels am I running? Uh, and of course, coincidentally, uh, the suspension. And then going forward, we're actually going to have a video dedicated to the rear setup. You know, where's my bumper from? What do I use for storage in the back? Uh, then we're going to go into the roof. We're going to go into comms. We're going to do uh, GPS. We're just going to go through the whole build um, and just kind of explain. I kind of feel that that's an uh, integral part that's missing. So I really want to outline that. So 2020 is definitely going to be excited. Enjoy this video and have a so let's start. Like I said, today we're going to talk wheels and tires. Uh, so as the car sits right now, as you guys know, it's on a two inch Iron Man ATS kit. So I do have a little bit of extra clearance just so you guys know. Um, the tires I am running is a 235-75-15 Milestar Patagonia ATR. So if you actually do the math and put it into uh, Imperial units, you're going to get a 29.2 inch diameter uh, top to bottom. Uh, so that we that tire, sorry, uh, is run with the Icon Alloys Ricochet wheel. So the specs on that wheel are a 15 by 7, uh, 5 by 100 bolt pattern with a plus 15 offset. So I've been super happy um, with both the offset, the tires, and you know I've talked a little bit about that, um, but I really want to go into each stage that I've had the build and talk about pros and cons. Uh, and just really tell you guys what I think is the best option and what will be best for you. Um, so let's get into it and I really hope you guys enjoy this video. So I wanna break the stages down into three parts. The first part is gonna be no lift on OEM tires and OEM wheels. The second is going to be uh, one inch lift and no lift both on 235s and I kinda wanna group that one together just because it's pretty similar. And the last stage is going to be the current stage, which is a two inch lift on the Ironman ATS kit with 235s. And I want to go into the pros and cons, sorry, of each one. Uh, so let's start with the OEM setup. So let's start with the OEM tires and wheels. So when I bought the car, it came with the 17 inch wheels on the Yokohama Geolander, which is not really an all-terrain at all. It's more of a street focused car with some all-terrain capability. So let's talk about the positives first off. Obviously, number one, no rubbing. <laughs> the car's designed to run that spec, so you don't have any issues at all. Obviously, one big worry when going to a bigger tire and wheel is that you're going to have more rubbing, uh, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. The second pro uh, is that that specific wheel diameter, wheel and tire diameter, uh, is based off or is the basis of the mile per hour calculation, right? And how many miles you're going, right? So based on the rotations of the tires, that's uh, where, where you get your miles per hour and how many miles you used on the car. So when you go to upgrade to a bigger diameter tire, that MPH and the miles that you travel are gonna be different. Um, not even mentioning that your MPG is gonna go down, but um, those are the two positives. The negative is that not enough traction. You know, you can air down to increase the area uh, that the, the tire is touching, but you're not gonna have that rugged, um, in-depth design that is used to act in those conditions. So, you know, that was the main reason why I moved on to the next setup, which I ran a 235-75-15 Milestar Patagonia ATR with no lift. So let's talk a little bit about that spec on no lift. And so stage two, stage two was a period where I had no lift and a one inch lift, both on 235s. So at that time I was running a, again, 235 Milestar Patagonia ATR still, but I was running it with a KMC Nomad 716, uh, same diameter, same width and everything. The only difference between my current setup and that wheel was the offset. That wheel had plus 10 offset and my current offset is plus 15 millimeters that is. So that right there, the offset addition was one of the positives of the second uh, iteration. So when you get more offset, more positive offset, you're moving that wheel off of the hub more to allow for more space between the actual tire and the strut to allow you to run 
a bigger tire. So that being said, the plus 10 and the plus 15 currently have given me what I need to, to run a, a bigger lift and run the bigger tires at the end of the day. Um, even an easier positive was more traction. You know, when I added the Milestar ATR, which is a very um, all-terrain but yet road tire, you're able to get both of that mix. I was able to add the traction needed to perform in conditions such as snow, sand, mud, whatever it may be, you know. Obviously, I do air down and I do increase that area more, but the actual tread of the tire is spot on on the ATR for what I need. You know, it's not an MT, but it's not a, a road tire. It's the perfect medium for my commuting daily and the off-road conditions that I push it to. So what is the negative of this side tire? So obviously the biggest one right off the back is rubbing. So again, with the no lift and the one inch lift, there was rubbing with a 235. Did I have to cut anything? No. The rubbing was the worst, obviously, when there was no lift. Um, I was getting issues rubbing when I was at full lock in reverse. And when the car was loaded up in the back, it would bottom out on uh, the fender and it would rub the plastic. Eventually, it stopped rubbing because there was no plastic to rub on. Uh, I personally didn't care. I knew that the 235 was more worth it than the 215, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But um, it did rub both on no lift and one inch lift. Uh, so let's talk a little about the two inch lift and what, what that did as far as tire. So the final stage, stage three. So the tires stayed the same. I am running the Milestar Patagonia 235-75-15, which is a tire that I, I truly love the tire. I've tested it, I've tried it, I've deflated it, inflated it, done a bunch of stuff to it, and it has never let me down. Love that tire, shout out Milestar tires. <laughs> the other change though, was the wheel. So I went from, again, the KFC Nomad to the Ion, Icon Alloys Ricochet, and that's a 15 by seven, five by 100, with a plus 15 offset. So right off the bat, a positive for that was more offset. I'm getting more space, more back space, sorry, to allow for more space in between the tire and the strut, again, with the two inch Ironman ATS kit. So what was another positive? Another positive was the decreased weight. So at the end of the day, Icon Alloys engineered the Ricochet to have less rotating mass, which is gonna allow you to run better both on and off-road. Um, we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the size of tires affecting everything, but a big thing is the weight affecting MPGs. Um, Icon designed this, this wheel to really outperform the others, and I've been really happy with it. And it actually goes back to the roots of Rally with the 12 spoke design, uh, and I'm really happy with both the stage two wheel and tire setup. That being said, there is a negative to that setup with the two inch lift kit. The wheel well of a Crosstrek is a horseshoe. So at the bottom, it cuts in at an angle. So what starts happening is at full lock, the tires will sometimes catch that corner and it'll rub a bit or not really rub, it'll clack, clack, clack. You know, every, every movement you go back just because it catches on. To me, that's not really a big deal. Eventually, I will be, cut, be cutting the bumper, but on that two inch lift, since the wheel is a horseshoe, you might get a little bit of that. It doesn't happen a lot, but it is something that I wanna make you aware of. So those are the stages. Now let's talk a little bit about what your other options are. I did a 235, 75, 15, but what can you run on your Crosstrek or your Forester or whatever it may be? But I'm gonna focus more on the... So what are your options? We've talked about what I did to the car, which was to put a 235, 75, 15 with no lift, one inch lift and a two inch lift. So here, if you look at this table, I'm going through wheel sizes, the most popular ones being 15, 17 and 18. And on the right column, you could see the tire sizes that you can run. So a really safe bet for a 15 inch wheel is to run a 215, 75, 15. As you can see, it's in green, which means it's safe which in turn <laughs> corresponds to no rubbing. The cool thing about it, yes, is no rubbing, but the downside is you downgraded your wheel size so that you could have more sidewall on the tire, but you're losing that sidewall because of how thin or how, how small the height is on the 215. That's why I recommend a 235-7515 to get the optimal sidewall needed to off-road when you air down or when you're running at regular PSI. 
A step up, which is in yellow, is a 225 70 15 or a 75 15. And then lastly in red, which you are gonna have some rubbing on, is 235 75 15. Now, let's say you have a premium on a 17 inch wheel or a limited on an 18. You could keep that wheel and just go on to say a 225 55 17 or even a 65 17, but people say 225 65 17 you'll need a two inch lift so that table here um that's been here this whole time is really to show you guys um what size tires you can run and which is safe which is not just really make sure to check it out i'll leave it in this video and if you guys want it sent to you guys let me know i'll share the file with you so now let's talk a little bit about what my recommendation is for your rig regardless of what you do um let's get into that and i think you guys are so we've talked about the phases of my car we've talked about what your options are to run but i want to talk a little bit about what my opinion is which is the best tire and wheel combo to run on an off-road or overland cross track so that answer is a 235 75 15 inch tire now let me tell you why there's two reasons number one is the area increase for traction if you're going on a trail and you're trying to grab onto a rock to grab more traction you're going to need that extra area grabbing onto the rock to be able to gain traction now let's say you have a more narrow tire the, you're going to have obviously more uh or sorry less area where you're touching the rock and you might not be able to grab that traction so just having that little more area uh, even when it's inflated or deflated is really, it, it's phenomenal how much a change in area or PSI to give you more area really gives you a lot more traction. So that, that increase in area is a big, big positive on 235. Another huge positive is more sidewall on the 235. Where you look at a 235, that's the biggest sidewall you can have. Being that you're running a 15 inch wheel, but the 235, that's a huge amount of sidewall. So you're actually able to rub on rocks without um, being worried about really scratching your rims or popping or anything because you have more area for the sidewall to, to be in contact with things. One thing that goes in unison with that is the positive offset of the, of the wheel. If you look at the Icon Alloys Ricochet, it has a plus 15 millimeter offset, which allows the wheel to be in more, right, with the tire sidewall sticking out to rub on those curbs or those rocks or whatever, therefore protecting it. So those are truly three huge positives of that combo. One negative is, again, the wheel well being that it's a horseshoe, you might catch sometimes, but at the end of the day, it is worth the struggle. The 235 is the best option for a cross trek off road. And to top it off, it looks really, really good. So I really recommend again a 235 75 15 on a 15 by 7, 5 by 100 with plus 10 or plus 15 millimeter offset. That is just my opinion. So that is the video. I thank you guys for watching. I really hope that you guys got a good amount of knowledge out of this video going over what tires and wheel combos you can run. Uh, it's been a question that's been asked again and again and again, and I really hope I encompassed everything in this one shot. Let me know how I did in the comment section below. Make sure to like this video. Make sure to subscribe as we're trying, we're trying to get it higher and higher every day. And remember, nothing is impossible until you try it. Have a great day.